On Sunday, October 8, 2023, our most beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai, vegan, graciously shared information about the workings of the negative power and specifically of some black demonic magicians, as well as details of her very recent encounters with this force. Greetings, God blessing everyone, all the children beloved by God. Pray that you are all okay. Thank God that we are still here and have everything we need, though some are still not as fortunate as some of us. I hope this is not the last time that I could talk to you. Because uh, I am living almost like in a cocoon at the moment due to so much attack from the negative power. Even though they should have never been able to do anything to me, but due to the karma of the world, such immense, such vastness of karma, they might be able to still do something. Well, they have been trying to do something, like those uh, black magic, putting needles through my body everywhere and pinching here, pinching there, like that. It's a feeling of pinching. It's not that painful, but just you know that something, you know, very sharp and pointed has been forced into your being. Sadly, those things still exist on this planet, and some even escape the net of karma, because between karma and karma there is a gap, and inside that gap there are some words, some ways that you can make use of to get things, dark things, bad things that you want, not you, I mean those bad magicians who came from the zealous demon's world. Anyway, you see, there are many worlds in our dimension. It's not just the physical world. There are worlds in between, between the physical and astral, which are hell. And then even in the astral world, there are fierce beings who always uh, provoke a higher level of the astral called like 33 heavens and keep fighting in order to expand their territory and also in the physical world they also want to control everything they charm humans they seduce them into their group slowly you know first they give them some magical happening so that they feel, oh, this is good, this is good, what I want, I get, you know. And slowly they make them do things to be able to access more magical stuff. It's just like people who sell drugs. First they give to some kids or some humans who are in vulnerable situations, or depressed or desperate for something new, out of boredom. They give them free, and then afterward, they slowly, you know, that person or that kid became addicted already, then they will ask them to buy and charge them more than usual. So they get back what they have been given free before, but they first they have given free to that kid or that person. The normal magic comes from the lower astral world, but there is also another kind of magic that is between the karma gap. Even in an atom, there are some gaps. Everything in the world has some gap in between. Even solid wood or solid stone, there are some gaps in between the molecules or cells. Inside our body also, it looks solid, but between the skin, the cells, we have some gaps as well. And I guess science probably has told us about that. I'm not sure if I have seen it anywhere. It's just what I know inside. Then I can tell you, because it's true. Though maybe I can't prove it. 
It doesn't matter. You listen or not listen. I'm used to people not listening already. And with all this influence from the Maya, the devils, the demons, the ghosts, mostly you are not yourself. Or sometimes you are not yourself. And that's why sometimes people went out in the night and did some murdering. They came back, they don't remember anything. Because the demons would just use their body temporarily, cast their soul aside or, you know, do something so that the soul doesn't even know, the mind doesn't even know. Only the body and the brain go along to do the hideous crimes. One of the prophets say that Jesus has been crucified again, or would be or will be crucified again. I think it was... uh, Oh, I forgot his name now, suddenly. Oh, God. The famous painter? Yeah. Oh, Da Vinci. Yeah, Da Vinci. This could happen. Like the black demonic magician would put needles through some effigy, or maybe look like the thing they make, looks like a human shape, and then they use needles and magical power to push it through, and that would also hurt the real humans that the uh, effigy of the so-called looking like a doll, you know, represents. And uh, whoever that has been done to will die sooner or later with uh, pain and all that in between. It also happened to me sometimes, but uh, I survived all of that. And sometimes not just the needles and incantations are done to a doll, but also to the physical body, my physical body, they just throw invisible so out magical sword or cut one to kill me on the spot and all that stuff. I survived all that all these years, but this time it was so strong that I could even feel it, you know, in the physical. And the thing is, it's not uh, only one black demon magician, but there are others as well. They gang together. My protector finally got through the thick web of karma and told me all this, and they have been able to put some protection ring around me. And then I also put a protection ring around myself too, so I'm like a caterpillar, but I still can move around. It's just less pain now, and even this morning, One of the black magicians put a wreath of flowers in front of my entrance so that if I stepped out of it, I would be poisoned by magic as well as these specially created flowers and die. If not immediately, because I kind of am strong, but it could be, it would take some time and I can't escape. Uh, luckily, at some breaking point of the karma of the world, my protector has been able to protect me and put a ring around me. The world karma is so huge, it could get through the protection. Uh, one never knows. So hopefully I, <laughs> I will survive again this time. If not, then please, 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 be vegan, make peace, okay? Pray to God, thank God for the vegan world and for the peace world, as well as the liberation of your soul. The liberation of your soul should be the foremost important goal in your life, because if you lost this time, 
it would take eons, 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 hundreds, billions, thousands of billions, trillions of years before you can regain your status as a human again, or animal people, or don't know what, whatever you have done in your life and other myriad of lifetimes might come upon you. And you might not be able to be free. You might not see the sun. You might not have any physical body given to you so that you can have a chance to redeem your past misdeeds, your past sins, which sometimes are not all your fault, but were influenced by the negative power in the physical world. As I have told you, 41% of this world population is either, you know, born by demons, supported by demons, influenced by demons, controlled by demons, or our demons themselves in the form of humans, because they borrow the body of humans. When somebody is weak and vulnerable, they will be able to do Sometimes when you sleep, the soul goes out and they will be able to uh, enter your body and use your body to do many things that you will not be able to fight against. And sometimes consciously, you don't want to do this and that, but something pours you, something forces you, and you do things and later you regret. Or your body is completely controlled by the demons and you could never regain it again. And your soul is floating around or in limbo somewhere, unable to have control of it and just live in misery. And even in the astral body, you still feel hungry, thirsty, but nobody will help you because your soul has been already cast away, cast aside. And if these demon magicians use these gap words or methods between the karma, then even the Lord of Karma doesn't know about it. It's not registered in the karmic system and it's not registered in the body's uh, mind as well. So nobody can help you. You just float around frustratingly, having hunger and thirst, but you won't die. And it's always like this and forever cold, hot. Anything would affect you, just like it affects your physical body, but then you can't do anything about it. And this is such a terrible, horrible, and utterly helpless situation. I would never want anyone to experience it. But sadly, the karma that the humans have done, that the beings on this planet have done, will be able to allow the demons and magicians to do that. And even not just one person, him or herself, but that karma, the consequence will affect her business, her family, her loved ones, husband, wives, children, great-grandchildren, etc. Even will affect the dog or the cat person that they love. This is a terrible thing. These magicians have such power and it's so easy for them just to kill anyone without blinking an eye. They use magic as well as physical means to kill anyone that's not pleasing them or opposes them or could be a danger to them, like they know something they did, some sin, some crime they did, and then this person might tell someone or their authority, then they would eliminate that person first. And then it becomes a habit. They will take pleasure in killing. They become a sadistic kind of being. And they know, and they escape the law of karma also, so they can just do anything they want. But I'm warning all of you who are in this demonic 
magical category that sooner or later you will be caught. Just like they caught one of you already. And the soul of this person knows that. Because she harms somebody that is holy, that is clean and pure, and devoted to God. Not I, not I, other people. And you wanted to harm your husband as well. And you want to have an incest relationship with your son, which he did not want. But you will, if he comes to you, you will try to use all kinds of things, drugs or whatever, to have what your lusty desire dictates you. Because you're used to winning. I just wanted to protect your husband. I do what I can because you wanted to kill him. Oh, you can't just kill anybody who you suspect or feel like is against you. It's not like that. There is universal law, you know that. Stop all this, okay? Who knows, I might be able to help you, to save you. <sighs> Truly, <laughs> I never thought of your husband as anything but just a very, very good child, even though he's very, very old already. I'm not even there, so stop trying to harm him or kill him, or you'll be irredeemable. No one knows about the secret of your four lovers and six children, who are not your husband's children. But you watch it, if heaven tells so you stop all this brutal violence against anyone near you, okay? Including your sons. Just because they refuse you, refuse your lusty approach. Oh my God. Oh my God. You demonic magicians kill people, but the law cannot do anything because there's no trace of it. It's easy to use that kind of magic power, but sooner or later, the other high court, the other so-called high guardian of the world will find you, and you will never see the sun again. You will never have any existence that you know. You'll be born forever in darkness, suffering whatever you have done to others, again, again, and again, non-stop. Even if the law in this world does not punish you because of no evidence, but the law of the universe will, and you can be assured that it would be very, 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 very heavy. I wanted to rescue you, to also save you, but heavens don't let, all the guardians don't let. I feel very sorry in my heart. I never want anyone to go through this punishment. There is a word called punishing word. These and other guardians specified guardians. It's just like a special police force or special military unit. They are specialized in looking for these outlawed uh, criminals like you and many others like you. So sooner or later, you know, your fate will be sealed forever in darkness in a terrible, special hell that no one can even come in to help you. No one will have ever heard of it. No one will ever know where it is. Only you and the punishment that will be dished out, measured on you, you know, forever. Oh, just to think about that, my heart shrinks. Oh, I just feel cramping in my 
body and my blood vessels want to stop even flowing. This is a terrible thing. Oh dear God, please, please, this world doesn't need to exist this way. Please don't ever let anyone create such a world again, no matter who he or she is. Oh dear humans, there are some entities just like the fallen angels and subordinates and stuff like that. And they just make more and more terrible energies from which other beings will be born and will be ruthless, moralless, godless, soulless. Truly, they have no soul. They are soulless. So they do anything without any feeling to hurt others, you know, innocent and vulnerable beings such as humans who are not enlightened, who are not connected with their divine self within themselves. That's how it happened. And to the magician, the black demon magician, that there's so much harm. I don't love your husband. You're wrong. I just feel sorry for the guy. He's my disciple. I have to protect him. It's my duty. My love for him is not the filthy lust that you have. He is an innocent man, faithful to God, devoted to meditation, worked hard all his life and trusts you. He worked hard all his life to take care of you and the six children who are not his children and he would never know. He took care of them and loved them just like his own children. And he never know are not his. Bless his soul. Such a man is so near to God. If you want to harm him, God will forever scatter your existence in all directions of the universe. You will never know what it's like to exist. Oh, dear God, such a shameless, remorseless, soulless being like you. Truly, as heaven told me, they say, that woman is morally unfit, worthless. First, I was taken aback. I did not understand. And then later, all the information came in just because I had to know. I did not want to, but I had to. Just because you used this uh, between karma gap to harm people. So the Lord of Karma did not report to me all this time but you will not get away with all that and you even want to hurt me yeah you put that uh, wreath of poisonous flowers this invisible poison to kill me this morning luckily my protector told me not to go out of my door and I didn't and the flowers were out after a while after one hour and 55 minutes. Killing me won't help you either because heaven knows it. Then someone else also knows it. But I'm still in my room in case. I'm still in my room meditating and talking to the humans so that they will be aware of this kind of harm that could befall them any time. Oh, but they would not know. Oh, dear God, thank God for protecting them. Thank all the angels. Oh heavens, whoever protects any humans or any beings on this planet, I have been protected many times, knowing or not knowing. Please accept my sincere thanks. Almighty God and all your children, workers who have helped to protect me in this lifetime. All the humans, you should thank God for that if you escape anyway without knowing or knowing you have to thank God Almighty and thank all His workers, the positive side workers in the universe. These are vegan marchers who protest against the animal people, meat industry and killing of animal people in the laboratories or in the slaughterhouses, as well as protesting against abortion. You should know they are the workers of the positive system. They are angels in disguise. You must also try to protect them. 
or help them, support them in any way you can. They are not born on the planet just to be human, just to eat and sleep and work. They are angels in disguise. I am glad they are here with you, with us. But still, the human's karma that stirs up and influences, fabricates, produces and seduces into doing wrong by the humans is so enormous. So much, so much that the whole sky could be covered with it. So please repent, do penance, do repentance and make peace wherever you can. And pray, 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 pray for yourself, for your soul to be liberated from all this darkness, from all these horrible worlds that are very near our planet and surrounding the planet, can engulf the planet. And so many demons are still in that world. Even the king of the biggest group of demons on this planet has changed and U-turned. And there is a story behind this U-turn, but I can't tell you today. Maybe I cannot tell you ever, but if I can, I will tell you that story someday. Another time, if I still am able to reach you through Supreme Master Television, please watch Supreme Master Television, even if you don't believe me. Just listen to some stories, some parable stories, some true stories, and listen to some good news and some bad news so you can protect yourself from that. We select the news that is vital to you, good or bad. Please try to look, try to see it so that you can be blessed, helped and protected to some degree by the energy of it. I put all my heart, my energy into that. Please listen, please watch. You don't have to follow me. You don't have to be my disciples. If you don't believe me at all, just watch it, okay? And put it next to your bed. If you can't watch it in the daytime, put it next to your head in your bedroom. It will help your consciousness to refrain from badness and to protect you from harm to some degree or to a very high degree. It depends on you, your virtues, your morals, your receptiveness and your merit in this lifetime as well. I'm not saying that for you to believe me or anything. I know it's difficult to convince you after you've been poisoned life after life. I just pray for you and love you. But if you can, just listen to Supreme Master Television. I can help you through that. Please take care. Please pray, pray, pray to God Almighty. Please worship, worship, worship. Praise, praise, praise God Almighty, no one else. Thank you. God loves you. I love you. Oh, dear God, I pray every day to you. Uh, uh, please. I don't always have enough time to pray. You know that I'm busy with 10,000 words to do. I pray whenever I can, but it's with all my sincerity. Please help humans. Please help all beings on this planet. At least this planet, if not all other planets. Please help them, please. Even if you keep sending your sons, your daughters to come to this planet, for example, Jesus Christ, Buddha, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Lord Mahavira, Prophet Mohammed, much peace be upon him, the prophet of the Baha'i faith, etc. May peace be upon all of them, whether they will reincarnate on this earth or any other planet to help your suffering children. Please don't let it happen again, ever. Don't let them crucify them, kill them. Talk to them in any way, please. They're your sons and daughters, they only do your work. Obey your commandments. And do whatever they can. 
<laughs> in all their possible ability in this physical world, which is so oppressive, and so limited, so prisoning, so so hard for them to do their work. Please, God, don't forget to continue to empower them in their physical form as well as with spiritual power so that they can continue to do their work as long as the physical body allows them to. So many of your sons and daughters have been murdered, tortured, <laughs> molested, and harassed in so many ways. Oh, please, please, <laughs> please hold their hands, help them. Uh, and above all, help all your children so that they can wake up and remember your name, remember your power, remember your connection with them. Because all your sons and daughters came down already, tried their best. There are still some old souls who are still not connected with themselves, with their God power self, with you. Dear Almighty God. Oh. Okay, all my friends on this planet, please keep praying. If you don't know any master who is powerfully enlightened enough to help you or to gain your trust, please pray hard. Pray every second, every minute that you're free from your work or from your burdens, from your worries, from any of your, you know, responsibilities. Just pray. Pray like you have to breathe, like you're underwater and need to go out of water, like you're hungry, like you're thirsty and desperately need food. Please pray with all your might, all your heart, please. That's all the weapon that you have, because otherwise the demons will take over your life, control your soul, your mind, and you cannot escape. You will do what they want, and then you become like them or their subordinates, and you'll be forever like that. And then you'll be caught and you will be punished forever as well. Uh. I know. I know we've been also praying for world peace, for what we can. But most important is to pray for yourself. Yes, your family, your deceased loved ones, relatives and friends. Because if no one prays for them, they will be forever in limbo or in some low astral level, which is full of dangers, full of lost souls and vicious beings, you know. And always they will have hunger and thirst, have nothing to eat, nothing to drink, nowhere to go. Please pray. I know war is terrible, but even praying for wants to stop is not as important as praying for your souls. You can also pray for wants to stop. But knowing that as I'm speaking to you every day, 200,000, more or less, beings being murdered alive in the wombs of some woman on our planet. Every minute you can calculate how many lives have been murdered, snuffed in the wombs, just like that. They can't even call out for help. And God sent them to us to help us, these pure beings, for this period of time. Oh, God. Uh, so you see, uh, the war in Ukraine, we say that uh, the number is uh, 250,000 or 300,000 Russians who have been sacrificed in the war. And not to talk about the Ukrainian soldiers who also died. Not to talk about being maimed, injured, you know, or disabled their whole life. They could not do anything anymore for their life. 
their country or their family. See, this is only, you know, some hundred thousand numbers, and we, we are aghast already. We are so in pain, and we are praying. We go on the street to protest, to voice our anguish already. Imagine every day, two hundred thousand die innocently before they even take a breath of life. They die in darkness in the womb. Die without anyone even praying for them or pitying them. And then they have to go and, and just be in limbo where they cannot do much of anything, just like a vegetable. But knowing consciously everything around them and about their life, about their fate, about their misery. Uh, some are lucky somehow or have some more merit and can stick around the parents, you know, the woman, the mothers who kill them. And also, it's, uh, sometimes it makes their life miserable, consciously or unconsciously, and many bad things will happen to that mother as well due to the welding souls that could not even touch a mother but hang around all the time, trying to reason with her, trying to talk to her, but in vain. There are many things that could happen when a soul dies, hanging around, floating around aimlessly, welling, hungry, thirsty, hot, cold. No one cares, no one knows. And they will get angry and then they will revenge on humans in some way. Or, you know, uh, throwing tantrums and creating havoc in some deserted house or haunted house. And let the human not even live in peace in such a place. Or we get sick or get in an accident if living in such an area or in such a house. After I woke up, I just felt like, wow, okay, the problem is gone. You know, life can go back to normal now. Deep down, I knew that I had killed my child. Like I had taken away my child, and 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 the pain and the hurt and everything just start to set in. Like you know, I, I didn't expect this abortion to wreck my life the way it did. All along, I wanted to be a good mom, and for the first time in my life, I I just felt like. I'm the worst sinner on earth. You know, having taken away my child when he was, he was weak and defenseless and I was supposed to be the one protecting him when he's in my womb. But I remember laying down back on the table, facing up the ceiling. I had one single tear that rolled straight back down to my hairline and I remember feeling how warm it was. And that's the last tear I cried for years. paid for death to enter my body, and it did. Physically, yes, but also emotionally and spiritually, I was just completely dead inside. I got more into cutting. I began drinking more. I just was a lot more careless with my body. I found myself a year later pregnant again. So I heard myself doing what I didn't even want to be doing, which was calling the exact same clinic that I swore I'd never step foot in again and agreeing to a date and a time and a price and all of that. And I had an abortion set again a year later. It's a very consistent evidence now we have from talking to exorcists and those who are involved in different types of deliverance ministry that former abortion clinics or places where abortions were formed are real haunts for demons. Very, very often demonic infestations occur there. And also those who were involved in abortions and so on often find themselves really targeted. Because in a way, if they've gotten away from it even, the devil thought he had them in their grip and now he's not going to mm. give up so easily. So there is, we, we have heard that many people who have exorcisms need, need exorcisms are uh, at, at some point in the past were involved in some way with abortion, whether having had one or paid for one and so on. There are many things that I could write 10 million books about. I could never describe all things in the universe to you. All these weird things, miserable things, mishaps everywhere on the planet. Not to mention about all the miracles, wonders, and the blessings 
from heavens and God. All the masters who came to earth kept telling almost other similar things that we have to be good, we have to refrain from killing, to refrain from anything that is not proper, that is not true. But humans don't listen. And the more we don't listen to the masters, the more we are being under the influence of the negative demons, devils, ghosts, goblins, or whoever is not good for us, not on the positive side of the universe. And we suffer, we suffer and suffer. No end in this lifetime as well as the next lifetime, either in hell, in limbo, or in just, you know, an endlessly uh, lost situation. And could never get out. Some can, but rarely, because the negative power will control all that after you have lost control of your soul, and you are helpless, hopeless. Oh, dear God, I could talk forever, but I can't. It just hurts me so much. Uh, if daily I have to see all the pain and suffering and torture on this planet of humans as well as the animal people and innocent trees and all that. Oh, God, even stones have feelings, believe me. They're just helpless and also worthless to do anything in their status of existence. <sighs> oh God, please help. I hope, I pray that I could talk to you again. And please take care of yourself very well. Please pray, 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 pray. Pray with all your might, please, please. <sighs> Even if you don't believe me, Pray and it won't hurt you. <laughs> it will help you. At least you will feel a little refreshed after praying. You don't have to believe in me to pray. Just pray to the Almighty. Not any little God. Not any of the names of God. Pray to the nameless. Almighty God, worship. God, worship the Almighty only. If you don't know any present master that you can trust, pray to the past masters that you know will have virtue, the pure and compassionate. Pray to Jesus, to the most recent masters. Pray to the most recent master and to all the masters in general and the saints and the sages. And worship only God Almighty. No one else. Worship only God Almighty. No one else. Even if they offer you something, you thank them, but, but above all, thank God Almighty. Please, please. Uh, I worry so much about all of you. And my heart aches for all of you, and I do love you. Not a human love, it's a different love that I cannot describe. And also from human to human, I do love you. All humans on this planet, I love all the animals as well. And all other beings in this world. Even if you call them non-sentient beings, they do have sentience. And I love them all also. I never pray for myself. I only pray for all of you. And if I do pray for myself, is that help me to be stronger. Dear Almighty God, most beloved, most worshipped, most reliable God, just help me to be stronger, to do your work, to do your assignment. That's all. Please ask God Almighty to forgive you and worship Him, pray to Him, send Him your love, all your love that you can muster, all the sincerity that you can gather, all the desperation that your mind can believe in, all the sincerity that you can collect. Just pray to God Almighty. 
worship God Almighty. No one else. Okay. That's it for now. And uh, I wish all of you the best of luck in God's grace, mercy, <laughs> and blessing. Amen. Love you all. Filled with sincere gratitude, we bow to precious Master's courage and are profoundly touched by you patiently enduring all challenging sacrifices in this physical domain for the sake of helping all beings. We deeply pray for Master's lasting protection and may all humans take heed of the negative invisible influences and embrace the positive side within themselves by seeking God Almighty's forever love and guidance. And to assure a more benevolent and safer world, may we make it totally vegan and peaceful today. Wishing Merciful Master to be always in robust health and assisted by all divine, gracious beings.